Lord Jesus, we know that even before we ask for anything, we give thanks first for everything that you have done already. Lord Jesus, this evening we worship you. This evening we lift our voices. We lift our voices and worship. We lift our voices and worship. Oh, receive our worship this evening father receive our worship receive our worship oh our wonderful you are how wonderful you are how loving you are oh jesus oh shila makob rote belevila rumela ikota dia sote that you sent your only son your only begotten son lord jesus oh lababu such love such love oh we worship you we worship you jesus we worship you daddy oh shalababu raito kapambe labuzi via tambe la pa oh shalikata runta tevelime via tosikata roshikata you are wonderful you are wonderful 
You are marvelous. You are wax are unique. Oh, she la baba po salam. We are not men of it. We are both shall have a bowl. We are baba po se katal. We so cottage. Where do we find another God like you? Where do we find another loving God like you? Trustworthy, faithful. Oh, she katal. You keep your covenant. You keep your promise. Oh, Lord. We love you this evening. Oh, shake us up. And we pour our hearts to you. We pour our hearts to you. We pour our hearts to you this evening, Father. Oh, shake us up. Don't be the way. Riba na boze le via. Oh, shala ba 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 ba. Ro sheke te ke te. Ria ba ba boze le ve. Rire be be ko taba. Ro shala ka taba. Ne ke te ve le ya. Oh, shita ba ko ve la ba. Oh, shire be 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 ko. Oh, shaka ta ta. How wonderful you are, Jesus. How wonderful you are, Jesus. When we reflect upon your works, your goodness, as individuals, as a ministry, Lord Father, we have every reason to worship you this evening. Every reason. Oh, shile be 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 bo. No, shika ta ta bo. You shake at all. You have shown us your mighty works, your mighty power, your goodness, your love. Oh, shalaba bo selebi. Rima na mo seli. Our hearts are full of gratitude. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day is a testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have protected, provided, sustained our lives, Lord Jesus. Oh, shere baba bo. Oh, le makote me. The acceleration we have in our lives is because of your grace. It's because of your grace. It's because of your grace. It is because of your grace. Oh, shala baba bo. Raito kape. Ya manamo se me. Vishe te kepe. Oh, she come on a horse. Oh, she on a horse, on a horse. You are worthy, Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, Lord. You are wonderful. You are. Shown us that you are a faithful God, trustworthy, that you keep your word, you keep your promises. Lord, shut up, attack, 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 lift your voice and just worship him. He's our faithful God, trustworthy. He keeps his word, whatever he says, he makes sure that he does. Light up, Father, I'm a host, Shalaba, let him be called the you never change. You're not like a man. You never change. You never betray. Oh, shala ba 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 ba. Ro me le be be bo shila. Raito kameli. 
Rivela Maboshi, Riababa Boshekata. You never change, Jesus. You never change. You never change. You remain the same. You remain to your promises. You remain to your covenant. You stick to your covenant. Oh, Rababa Bosha. Go Santa La Ilaba. Oh, Shela Makovelani. Raito Kapa. Oh, Shela Mamama. Ria Makotebe. You never change, Jesus. You never change, Father. You never change. You never change. Trust who you are. Faithful you are. Oh, Shalababa. Ronele Vilama. Laito Kandele Via. Oh, Shalababa. Oh, Shekata. Renzele Vilama. Oh, Shalama Kota. You never change, Jesus. You never change, my Father. You never change. You never change Jesus. Oh shala baba baba osa. Raito baba baba. Oh shika tama mola. Ronte velia makosele. Oh shela baba baba osa. Ronti la makofi la baba. Oh shala baba. We caga my old mother. 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 evening we are grateful for bringing us to your house today we thank you for helping us to worship today and we ask you to receive the worship because it belongs to you alone now father as you have gathered us in your house we pray that your will be done in this service and even in our lives we ask you to take over and let your will be done. We thank you, we worship you, and we honor you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Uh, I want before we go to hearing the word of God tonight, we will read from the book of First Corinthians chapter number 14. And verse number 10. First Corinthians chapter number 14 and verse number 10. The Bible says, 
there are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. There is a version that says, there are many voices in the world, and all those voices have got a significance. Let me try to put it in a way that all of us will understand. Behind, okay, let's, this is ASB. Okay, let's read this. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and no kind is without signification. It is important for us to understand that there are many voices as the word of God has told us today. And one of the things that we must understand tonight is that behind every problem there is a voice. Let me put it in a different way. Every problem has a voice. And behind every voice, there is a spirit. So that spirit that is behind the voice of the problem is the real problem. So one of the things that we must do as believers is to deal with the voices that are speaking in our lives. Every evil voice that is speaking in our lives. Because behind that problem that you have, behind that challenge that you have, there is a voice. And behind that voice, there is a spirit. I want us to take some time, two, three minutes. And I want us to silence every evil voice. Number one, of sickness. Every sickness has got a voice. <laughs> Every struggle you are going through has got a voice. Every rejection has got a voice. Even poverty has a voice. That stagnation that you are experiencing, it has a voice. Every problem has a voice. And I want us to take time tonight to silence the voice of sickness in our lives, the voice of struggles in our lives, the voice of stagnation in our lives, the voice of rejection in our lives, the, the voice of disfavor in our lives. Whatever you are going through, it has a voice. Silence the voice of your problem. Please look at your neighbor and say, silence the voice of your problem. I don't know what challenge you have. I don't know the problem you are having. But I want you to understand that challenge has a voice. That problem has a voice. When the voice of that challenge is silenced, the challenge disappears. When the voice of that problem is silenced, the problem disappears. And this is the secret in this kingdom. 
we win by our tongues. We are here to silence every voice of every problem that we are going through tonight. I don't know what your problem is, but I want you to lift up your voice and begin to silence every voice that is speaking against your life, that is speaking in your life, every evil voice speaking in your life. Silence that voice of poverty. Silence that voice of rejection. Silence that voice of sickness. Silence that voice of disfavor. Silence that voice of barrenness. Silence that voice that is speaking against your life. Open up your mouth. Begin to silence every voice that is speaking in your life. Every voice of every kind of problem that is speaking in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Silence those voices. Silence the voice of defeat. Silence the voice of failure. Silence the voice of poverty. Silence the voice of sickness. Silence the voice of frustration. Silence the voice of struggle. Silence the voice of stretch down. Silence the voice of disappointment. Silence the voice of stagnation. Silence the voice of death. Silence the voice of rejection. Silence the voice of barrenness. In the mighty name of Jesus, take authority and dominion. In the mighty name of Jesus, and silence those voices of defeat. Those voices of failure, those voices of poverty, those voices of sickness, those voices of breakdown, let them be silenced in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I take authority in the mighty name of Jesus. I silence every voice of defeat in my life. I silence every voice of defeat in my family. I silence every voice of failure in my life. I silence every voice of sickness in my life. I silence every voice of frustration in my life. I silence every voice of struggles in my life. I silence every voice of breakdown in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I silence every voice of disappointment. In the mighty name of Jesus, I silence every voice of stagnation in my life. I silence every voice of death in my life. I silence every voice of rejection in my life. I silence every voice of barrenness. In the mighty name of Jesus, silence those voices now. Silence them, silence the voices. Silence every voice of defeat in your life. Silence every voice of failure in your life. Silence every voice of struggle in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Silence the voice of sickness in your life. Silence the voice of frustration, of disappointment, of rejection, of death. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rema Sharabakadaya. Reketeri namakadosh, redi kataya pasoko porina, rada kapasaka, makeni aranosa, repasaka bakataya, lama saka bakanda. Silence those voices of poverty, of struggle, of frustration, of breakdown, of 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 rejection, of disappointment, of death, of barrenness. In the name of Jesus, of this favor, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rika Pazaka Pazata La Masaya, Lege de Rina Makaina Zoko Poyeta, Ereni Kaya Pazoko Porinakla, Zenia Kora Pazere Riata, Aroma Zeterina Krada, Rakote Rene Mesia Ratoria Pazara Klana, we worship your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we worship your holy name. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
And as we gather in your house tonight, we take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. We silence every voice of defeat in our lives and our families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we silence every voice of defeat. We silence every voice of failure. In the mighty name of Jesus, we silence every voice of poverty. We silence every voice of sickness. We silence every voice of stagnation. We silence every voice of frustration. We silence every voice of depression in the mighty name of Jesus. We silence every voice of rejection. We silence every voice of sickness. We silence every voice of death in the mighty name of Jesus. Every voice that is of evil and speaking in our lives. We silence it now. We silence the for evil voices in our lives, in our families, in this church, in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare every evil voice silence tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, let the only voice that we will have preeminence in our lives, in our families and this church, be your voice. Your voice that blesses your people. Your voice that transforms your people. Your voice that makes the difference. Let your voice be heard in our lives. We thank you, Father. We worship you. And we honor your name. Now, Father, as we hear your word, we pray, O oh God, that your voice will be heard through the speaking of your word. We thank you and we worship your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we give thanks. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Every voice of defeat is defeated. Every voice of failure is defeated. No more defeat. Please look at your neighbor and say, no more defeat. No more failure. No more frustrations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Then help me to celebrate the worship team as they get back to their seats in the name of Jesus. I take this opportunity to thank God for bringing us into the house today. And I also want to thank each one of you for coming even in with, with the rain that is, uh, you know, there are people who will not come when the rain begins. But you are here. And I want to thank God for you that the rains could not stop you. We said on Sunday, we are unstoppable believers. The rain cannot stop us. And nothing will stop us from coming to the house of God, from coming for worship. We are unstoppable in Jesus' name. I want to allow you to take your seats in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, I, I, I request that Dedan moves where the people are so that he doesn't have to be having neighbors. Chairs are the neighbors. And even Grace, we also move because you need a neighbor. You, you know, you can't be telling the chair, uh, I reject rejection. So, yeah, yeah, now we are okay. Now we are okay. We are doing well. We are doing well. Wow. Okay. I, I want us to read a few verses of scripture, though I'm only interested in one verse, but 
I want us to read, I think they are usually five, the book of Psalm 103, we read from verse number one. This is what the Bible says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That is where my message is in verse 2, but let's read the entire of it. Verse 3 now. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I want to bring us a message tonight that I've titled, Remember the Benefits of the Lord. Remember the Benefits of the Lord. This psalm is the psalm of David. And what David is doing, he is speaking to himself. In fact, he say he is speaking to his soul, meaning he is speaking to himself. And he is reminding himself that he should not forget the benefits that he has gotten from the Lord. One of the things that is very common with man is forgetfulness. People are forgetful. And I believe that this man, David, he was speaking to his soul and telling his soul to bless the Lord and not to forget all his benefits because he understood that man is a forgetful being. And the same thing here. All of us, we have the capacity to forget. We have the capacity to forget from where God has picked us from and to where he has brought us into. And here, David is reminding himself that you must never stop blessing the Lord and you must never forget his benefits. And one of the things you will understand is that men are ungrateful. Men do not remember what God has done in their lives. But this man, David, he remembered what Jehovah had done in his life and he listed them. He listed all the benefits that comes from God. And when he is writing this psalm, all the things that he wrote he had experienced them from the Lord. And that is why he is telling his soul, bless the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. There is a psalm, number 68, if you read verse number 19, so that we can be able to go together. Psalm 68 and verse number 19, as we read the foundation of this message. It says, listen to this, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Who daily loads us with benefits. Now, when 
you look at this, he is always remembering that God is the one that loads him with benefit. And now because David is not there, we must always remind ourselves that it is Jehovah that daily loads us with benefit. He is the one that heals our sicknesses. He is the one that delivers us from the evil one. He is the one that makes way for us. He is the one that fights our battles. He is the one that helps our lives. You know, men have the capacity to forget that it is the Lord that has done it for them. I want you to understand where you are, it is the doing of the Lord. What you have, it is also the benefit of the Lord. The money that you enjoy, it is not because of your hard work. It is a benefit from the Lord. Because there are some people who think what I am is because of my effort. What I have is also because of my effort. Where I am, it is me that has brought myself. I came to let you know where you are, you have been brought by Jehovah. What you are, you have been made by Jehovah. What you have, you have been given by Jehovah. Remember the benefits of the Lord. Please look at your neighbor and say, remember the benefits of the Lord. No. It is very important that we take care so that we don't become familiar with the benefits of God, with the blessings of God, and with the grace of God. You know, let me tell you, it is not normal for you just to wake up and be alive. It, take, it is a benefit from the Lord. Don't be familiar with your waking up. Don't be familiar with your being healthy. Don't be familiar with the grace of God. Don't be familiar with the blessing of God. Don't be familiar with the benefits of the Lord because it has taken the hand of God for you to have all that you have. Please lift up your hand and say, Father, help me not to be familiar with your blessing." And with your grace. So each one of us, we must make it a lifestyle of remembering the benefits of the Lord. Let it be a lifestyle. Um, you can even put it the other way. Let it be a lifestyle that you will never forget the benefits of the Lord. Let that be your lifestyle. Every time you wake up, you are thanking God for his benefits. You are telling God, I have woken up. It's because it is a benefit from you. I am healthy because it's a benefit from you. I have money in my pocket because it is a benefit from you. I am in the house of God because it is a benefit from you. That is why I'm saying, Remember the benefits of the Lord. Now, I want to deal with what happens when you remember the benefits of the Lord. Number one, it reminds you of the faithfulness and the goodness of God. Or you can say like this, it helps you to recognize the faithfulness and the goodness of the Lord. Whenever you remember the benefits of the Lord, there is one thing that happens. You become grateful. And you start to see the faithfulness of God. You start to see 
the goodness of the Lord. When you see the faithfulness of God, when you see the goodness of the Lord, then you become grateful. Ingratitude is swallowed up by you remembering the benefits of the Lord. I want you to write down the book of Psalms 116 and verse number 12. If you can be able to read it in New King James Version. Psalms 116 verse number 12. Now listen to what the psalmist is saying. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? You see, David is saying... Everything that he has is a benefit. And that is why you are seeing him from one psalm to another. From that psalm to another. He is always talking about the benefits that he has received from God. And, and you see that he doesn't know. He is saying, what shall I render to the Lord? You know, because he has remembered the benefit, now he is asking himself, what shall I do to the Lord? Because he has given me benefit, what shall I render to him? And this must be the question we are asking. For the faithfulness of God, for the goodness of the Lord in my life, what shall I render to him? Whenever you remember the benefits of the Lord, you recognize his faithfulness. You also recognize his goodness. And by that doing, you become grateful to God for his benefits. Let me ask somebody, has God been faithful to you? Has God been good to you? Then you must be grateful to him. One of the things I found out is that whenever you remember the benefits of the Lord, you feel indebted to give God praise. You give indebted to give. And that is what the psalmist is saying. What shall I render to Jehovah? For all his benefits towards me. When you remember the benefits of the Lord, you see his faithfulness. You see his goodness. Then you become grateful. And you feel that you have a debt to pay. A debt of praising God. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you remember all the benefits of the Lord, it helps you not to take God for granted. Because there are people who take God for granted. But when you remember, I am alive because of him, you stop taking God for granted. You start seeing his faithfulness. You start seeing his goodness. And this is what we are saying tonight. We will not forget the benefits of the Lord. We will remember what he has done in our lives. You know, some people like us, you know, you may not have a testimony, you may not have something to thank God for like some of us. Some of us who were seeing death coming and then God snatches you from the, the jaws of death, then we have everything to thank God. You know, yesterday uh, uh, I, I spoke to Pastor Tito yesterday. He, uh, by the way, let's keep on praying for him. He's still in hospital. And, I, and when I spoke to Pastor Tito yesterday, he said, he said, Bishop, the reason I am still alive is because I remember you are in a position like I am long ago and you came out strong. And he's saying, because of you, I will also come out strong. So, you know, and, and I will tell you this. It is not easy to be in the hospital for three months. It is not. It is not. But he is saying, because you made it, I will also make it. 
And I'm saying this, some of us have seen the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God in our lives that we can never forget the benefits. We know we are alive because of him. I remember one time, I, I had an office in town in River Road and my office was on the fourth floor. And by then, I had a very serious problem with the nerves. I could not climb the stairs. One day, I climbed to the second, to the second floor and I was not able to go up. I just slept on the, uh, is it called sleeping? I slept or I laid on, on, the, on, on the stairs. And then I'm calling my secretary, Josephine, and my voice is going. And they came and picked me up. I could not sign a check. There was money in the bank and my family was suffering because they could not access the money. And that is when I decided my wife must be signatory to my accounts. Every man that is here, make your wife a signatory. If you are looking, if there is a man next to you and say, have wisdom, tell them, have wisdom. Because it's very important. It's very, uh, yeah, Pastor Han, have wisdom. It is, it is very important. But when I look at where God has brought me from and what he has done in my life, I cannot forget his benefit. I will always remember his benefits. You know, it is very easy for you to think you are your own source. Very easy. You to think you are your own source. But I am here to tell you, you are not your own source. God is your source. Everything that you have is a benefit from God. So when you remember the benefits of the Lord, you start to see his faithfulness. You start to see his goodness and you begin to praise him and you begin to be grateful and you begin not to take God for granted. Is God speaking to you tonight? There must be someone that needs to hear this message. Number two, think of what happens when you remember the benefits of the Lord. It helps you to remain humble. It helps you to remain humble. Humble. You know, when you understand that all that you are and all that you have is by the kindness and the grace of God, you will humble yourself. You will humble yourself. No, but let me tell you, the people that remembers the benefits of the Lord, nobody tells them to be humble. They are humble automatically. And I am praying that tonight God will help you to always remember all his benefits that you may be able to be humble. Whenever you see a man that is proud because of what he has, that is proud because of their position, that is proud because of their status, it is because they don't see it as a benefit from the Lord. And that is why 
that man cannot when you see a man that cannot recognize that then that man is a proud man and it's a man that does not recognize that it is the hand of God that has done all that he he is seeing in his life please can you look at your neighbor and say neighbor all you have all you are is not your achievement When you see proud people, it is because they are seeing what they have, a, they, have ha, they have acquired in life as their own achievement. Like, I, I feel like I am proud. I have you members in this church. It's, you know, it is not because of my effort. It is, this is a benefit from the Lord. It's a blessing. Let me say this to you. There are many preachers who, who preach better than me, who pray more than me, who are holier than me, and they cannot gather people like this. It is not personal achievement. It is a benefit. It's a blessing from God. It is by grace. So when you recognize, when you remember the benefits of the Lord, that remembrance helps you to remain humble in life. I've said here before, and we've read together from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 27. If you can project it, we read it so that we get the exact words. John, the gospel according to St. John chapter 3 verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. When you know that, you humble yourself. It is not your effort. Please, can you look at your neighbor and say, everything you have is a receivement from heaven. Can you change it? Tell them, everything you have is not an achievement. It is a receivement from heaven. And I want this to sink. It comes down. Pride comes down. And you begin to be humble. There is something that Jesus said <coughs> in the book of John, chapter 19. If you can give it to us, verse number 11, I believe it's verse number 11, part, that part A in New King James Version. <laughs> this scripture, <laughs> it is Jesus that is reminding Pilate. Now, Look at what Jesus is, 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 is reminding Pilate. Jesus answered, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. You know, he is before Pilate. He is about to be sentenced to death. But he is reminding I don't know whether there is any word like sentencer. <laughs> he is reminding that man, Pilate, that even this power that you are using to sentence me, it, does not, it is not from you. You wouldn't be having it if it was not given to you from above. 
Humble yourself. Everything you have is from God. Humble yourself. When you remember all the benefits of the Lord, then you will humble yourself. academic ago of inclination. But when you when you knew even you know those days when I when I started getting rich. <laughs> look at that, look at the pastor when he started getting rich. And and I got my first vehicle in the year 1994, when some of you were not born. Shegeb was still in the ruins of the dad. And even Faith was, I think Faith, Faith was, I think she was not born. The mother was pregnant with her. So I got my first car in 1994. And you know, by then, I was still born again, but very proud because I had a lot of money. You know, I was not delivered from pride. Because let me tell you, in 1994, when you are earning 7,700, you are very rich. And when I got the first car, everybody must know that Joe Bogwa Kuria is driving. So the keys could not enter my pocket. The car keys, you're, you're talking. And then. When you go to the hotel in Muru, you put it on top. And because it was a Toyota, where it is showing the Toyota logo, you put it on top. It is facing up so that people will, will know this is not the key of a padrock. And you know, this... You, I. I forgot that this is not an achievement. This is the receivement from above. But when I realized that everything that I have is from above, I humbled myself and give, gave God all the glory. Now, you who is still parading yourself like you have achieved things by yourself, you must remember it is a benefit from the Lord. You know, pastor, those are the days you are going, you know, then there were not, you know, those days there were not so many cars like the way we have. You will go to town and you know, the parking, the way they are done, they are lines. You park in between the lines so that when another car comes, you can be called to move the car so that everybody knows. And then you put, you know, the silencer at the back. Brrr, so that when I pass Moshada, they know Joe has come. Brrr, you know, you, this is what I'm talking about. People who want to show as if it's their own achievement, as if it's their personal achievement. But I want you to know every time you remember that it is the hand of God, you start being humble and giving God all the glory. There is a man by the name of, uh, what is his name? David. David, I said on Sunday, I told you on Sunday, he fought 
66 battles and he never lost one. Do you know what he said? It was not his achievement. He said, can we read uh, Psalm 144 verse 1, please? Psalm 144 verse 1. Now listen to this. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. You see, the reason, he is giving the reason why he won all the battles. Because the Lord trains his hands for war. And his fingers, he is recognizing it is not him. It is not his muscles. It is not his spear. It is the Lord that trains his hands for war and fingers for battle. A king that is humble to recognize where his 66 victories has come from. It is not your money. It is because of the Lord. That is why you are able to make it. And when you realize that it's a benefit, then you will humble yourself. Number three, whenever you remember the benefits of the Lord, it helps you to make the Lord your focus. It helps you to make the Lord your focus. You will not, fo you will not focus on men. You will even not focus on yourself. And you will not focus on the situations. You will remain focused to God. Because you know that the victory that I need comes from him. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from men. It doesn't come from what I have. My victory comes from God. Let me say this. Anyone that focuses on a man will be ashamed. I will say that again. Anyone that focuses on a man will be ashamed. The Bible says, in Psalm 34, verse number 5, maybe we can be able to read so that we get word after word. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Anybody that focuses on the Lord, they are not ashamed. When you remember the benefits of the Lord. You will focus on the Lord. And as long as you focus on him, you will never be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. I say to somebody here, as you remember the benefits of the Lord, may the Lord make sure that you are not ashamed. David, remembered the benefits of the Lord. How? He remembered the victories he had gotten before he had been given by God. He is saying, I killed the bear. I also killed the lion. The same God that helped me to do it will help me to deal with this Goliath. Now, look at this. He is not focusing on Goliath. He is focusing on the benefits that he had gotten before Goliath came. So when he focused on the God of the benefits, the God of the benefits helped him to give him another benefit that is called defeating Goliath. He focused on the benefits that he got. You know, the problem with the army of Israel is because they were focusing on Goliath. And that was the difference. 
David was focusing on the Lord and the, he focused on the, he remembered the benefits of the Lord. These soldiers were focusing on Goliath. That's the difference. That's the difference. You must not focus on that situation. You must not focus on that mountain. You must not focus on that Goliath. Focus on the Lord. And, and you know, there, there is this scripture that we have read many times in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 12, where Jehoshaphat is saying, our eyes, saying, this army, and he's saying, our God, Will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. But he's saying, our eyes are not on the multitude. Our eyes are upon you. We know what you have done before. You know you can do it again. No matter what you're going through, don't focus on that situation. Focus on the God of the benefits. Nehemiah is, has gotten a report about the wars of Jerusalem. He prays to God. God gives him favor before kings. All the, whatever he required, he was given free. Everywhere he passed, to go to build the wall of Jerusalem. Everything he required. The trees he required. The materials he got. And when he started building the wall. The enemy came. He remembered the benefits of the Lord. The Lord who had fought for him before. And he is telling his people. In Nehemiah 2.20 in NIV. The God of heaven will give us success. He remembered. He gave me success. He will give me success today. I say this to you. What God did for you before, he can do something new. He can do it again. He can give you another benefit. He can fight that battle for you. So whenever you remember the benefits of the Lord, it helps you to keep your focus on the Lord. Number four. It helps you or it gives you boldness to make faith declarations. When you remember the benefits of the Lord, it gives you boldness to make faith declarations. Let me use David. When you go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, you begin verse number 34. You will find David narrating how God gave him victory. Over the lion and the bear. Let's read. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. You know, he is narrating the benefits and what the Lord has done for him. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, that he find. I went out of it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by the beard and struck it and killed it. Verse 36. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this as uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Now, listen to this. Seeing he has defied the armies of the living God, verse number 37. Moreover, David said, the Lord 
You see, he is recognizing the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. No. See, I have received benefits. The Lord helped me to kill the bear and the lion. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of those. You know why? He is making this bold declaration. It's because he remembers what the Lord had done for him. And he knows he is the same yesterday, he is the same today, he is the same forever. That is why it is giving him boldness to make faith declarations. And he goes ahead and he's telling Goliath, today I will disconnect your head from your body. How can a small boy speak like this? There is something that he knows. And what does he know? He knows the God of the benefits of killing the lion and the bear. He had gotten, he had seen him do it. And he knows what he did yesterday, he can do today. That is why he is standing with boldness and making faith declarations. Can you give us verse 45 to verse 47? And then we try and see how we are going to finish. David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied, verse 46, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you and take your head from you and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with the sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord and he will give you into our hands. You see, please, listen to this. He, he removes himself from there. You know, after making the, the, the faith declaration, now he's saying, the, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword or spear. For the battle is the Lord's. You see, the battle now is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. He is making faith declaration and then moving away, paving way for God to do it. You know, when you remember what he did yesterday, that he fought for you a battle and you won, you will make a declaration saying, the same God that gave me victory yesterday, he will still give me victory today. Number five, so that we finish. When you remember the benefits of the Lord, it opens the door for God to do more in your life. It opens the door for God to do more in your life. In other words, when you acknowledge what God has done, you attract him to do more in your life. You open the door for him to do more in your life. I'll say this to you. As you remember the benefits of the Lord, may you become a candidate of more blessings. When you remember that what you have, it is God that has given you, become a candidate of more blessings in life.
everyone that remembers the benefits of the Lord, they position themselves for more harvest. They position themselves for more testimonies. They position themselves for more breakthroughs. They position themselves for more blessings in Jesus' name. If you don't forget the benefits of God, you are telling God, do more. And you know, I love God. When God knows that you will not forget what he has done for you, he will do more. But look at the people who forget. They shut the door for God. They don't remember what he did. They usually sing only one testimony. That in 1964, I had a bicycle, Comerera, and that is where the testimony ends. There is nothing else that comes because they forgot the benefits of the Lord. Please look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you stop appreciating God, you start depreciating in life. Tell them again, neighbor, when you stop appreciating God, you begin to depreciate in life. So we are here and we are praying, oh Lord, give us grace to remember all your benefits. Because how is David telling his soul? I tell, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his. It means he had a tendency of forgetting. So from today we are praying, Father, give us a lifestyle of remembering your benefits of appreciating what you have done in our lives. Give us the grace that we will never forget your benefits in our lives. Let me say this and then we pray. You must do it intentionally. You must remember the benefits of the Lord intentionally. I choose to remember. You must force your soul to remember, like David. I remember I am alive because of you. I remember I am where I am because of you. I remember that this church is standing because of you. We refuse to forget the benefits of the Lord. Please look at your neighbor and say, I refuse to forget the benefits of the Lord. The reason you are here, it is only because God helped you. The reason you are not six feet under, it is because the Lord preserved you. You know, me, Pastor Ben, and Brother Simon, we all got COVID. Is it not true? Ask, ask, ask Minister Simon. He got it very, and it was very tough on him. Ask Pastor Ben, ask me. I got it twice. And the doctor told me, you are at the edge. You, you know, he told me you are like in a weighing scale. No, when we know you, no, no, when we know you. you, you no, imagine you being told that. 
but, but I am alive. It is a benefit. All of us, you know, I have friends, bishops, one bishop. I met him in Rimuru. One month after I met him, in fact, it was three weeks, I had his death, COVID. Are we special? No. Benefits of the Lord. You have not preserved you. Please look at your neighbor and say, you have not preserved yourself. That's what I'm saying. We must remember on a daily basis. Let it be a lifestyle to remember the benefits of the Lord in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us tonight. And I am praying, O oh God, that you shall grant us grace to remember your benefits on a daily basis. That we will make it a lifestyle not to forget all your benefits. Help us to count our blessings and thank you continually. We thank you, we worship you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Everybody shout amen. Let's put our hands together and celebrate the Lord. <clears throat> so, you must... Count your blessings. And when you have counted them, then you must continually bless and thank the Lord for those blessings. Let, let, let's wind up. I know as we prepare your offering, can we read uh, Psalm uh, 34 verse 1? This is for you to prepare your giving. Let's read this. Listen to the psalmist. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. As you remember the benefits, you will be able to bless the Lord at all times. You will praise and thank him continually. It will be a lifestyle that you have adapted because you remember all you are, all you have, it is by the grace of God. Let's give our offerings so that we may be able to wind up the service. I know we have really taken some time. It's already 6.30. But we thank God because it was important for us to hear this message. Hallelujah. All the finances we have is a benefit from the Lord. It's a benefit from the Lord. As we give, we are giving part of the benefit that we have received from him. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us powerfully tonight. And now, Father, out of the benefit the financial benefit you have given us, we give to you tonight. As we do it, Lord, let there be a flow of more benefits. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. So there is a pay bill that is on the screen. In case you want to use it, you can use it. Otherwise, you can be able to bring you are giving here on the altar, and the Lord will bless us all. You are most welcome in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
it's also a benefit to be in the house of the Lord. So I request all of us to be upstanding now. And we thank God for giving us success in this service and for speaking to each one of us. We want to wind up the service with the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. You are blessed. You are highly favored. We are meeting again here on Thursday for another service. Please come and bring along a friend. So, is it that good English? Bring along a friend. Bring, okay, whichever. This is, it came by ship. So come with somebody on Thursday so that we can be blessed together. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Amen. <laughs>